Alrighty then. Okay, we going. Okay, we on. All right, we're gonna wait for some people to get here. Uh, oh. Just waiting around for people to come hang and say hi. Today, today's an important day. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not starting the shtick yet. I'm going to wait like at least a minute. Let's see how my audio is. Let's see how my audio is. Terrible. Hide player. Bada boom. All right. God, look at that ice cube. Look at that thing. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Oh. It's gorgeous. I don't know why I'm I'm like. Hello. What's up, Laventure? Visiting. Aren't you visiting LA? Welcome. All right. Um, so today is, uh, hi Iggy. Today's the new rules breakdown, but we're gonna, we're gonna do something a little interesting. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna go in chronicle, chronolo cr chronological, this is already disastrous. All right. First things first, one bean. I'm nervous. I'm very nervous. I'm nervous because, well, my last stream was like, really, really like, meandery. And I loved getting comments of like, yo, build a track, man. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I was like, at first I was defensive. I was like, well, you know, I'm a producer that streams, not a streaming producer, blah, 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 blah. And then I realized, but he's right. So, not this stream, but, I mean, maybe we'll fuck around after, but I, I really, like, I'm going to try next time to actually compose a track. So, uh, welcome, Henry Sugar. I'm glad you caught it live. It's as unremarkable as it is recorded. <laughs> um, but, yeah, today we're going to go, so... Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we've already got some viewers, so let's just fucking start the show. Who cares? It'll be on YouTube after. Anyways, I feel like there's maybe a chance, like, Soul State will edit it, which would be nice. But he did a good job on the, on, a really good job on the Pretty Please breakdown. But I feel like I was just, you know, that stream I was so on, you know, I'm gonna hope, I'm hoping to be that uh, informative this one because. Uh, here's the thing is like this stream is going to be structured slightly different. Okay. I'm going to go from the day of demo of new rules through. So the first project you're going to see, and God, it took me forever to find these fucking files. Like I pulled, do I have auto tune on my voice? Hold on a second. Am I crazy? No, nah, I don't. Okay. <laughs> that was weird. Um, uh, so we're going to start with the day of, and then the original, um, demo that was pitched and then um some of duo's vocal session when we were tracking the vocals and then the i guess final demo this should be called final demo no 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 this is the second demo you schmuck okay the second right right okay second to final demo and then new rules well this one it's called new rules darian because i did at one point um, shout out to Darian, Citrus College. Shout out Citrus. Um, I went to his class. Um, he's a good friend of mine. And I like he put it up on the projector. And it was like the first time I'd ever broken anything down way before I started streaming. And I was nervous as shit. But everyone was so nice. And that's, I think, when uh, I got bit by the bug. The bug of teaching. Oh, I love it. it gives me purpose. All right. So. Now, uh, when when I do get to the final, um, I guess dem or demo, 
our final version. Um, I'm going to pull up. I, I, at one point, Saul State posted this because uh, I, <laughs> I said I was going to do this stream like 50,000 times. And I just never had the courage or the time to like really go in because here's the thing is when, you know, when we get to the final uh, project, you'll you'll see like I bounce things down. So it's not as interesting when it's like, you know, here's a combination of all my synths together. Like this will this way, like as we go in chronological order, we'll get some insight into like, you know, the first version of the bass and like how what the track sounded like the day I wrote it, like. You know, so we might get actually some of those stems separated throughout, like as we go through. So, anyways, that being said, when we get to the final project, I'm gonna go through Soul State's. He made a post about what questions do you have uh, if, when, when, even when I did a new rules breakdown, <laughs> and at that time it was a, it was supposed to happen like two months ago. But anyways, there's all these great questions, and I'm gonna go over some of those, or like the most upvoted ones, or whatever the fuck. Okay. Uh, all right. So, let's get right into it, huh? Let's see. Okay. So, I'm not gonna play, like, the whole fucking song, but I want to play a little, like, these are literally the takes of Caroline the day we wrote it at this songwriting camp. I said it so many this is, times, almost made me cry. actually, oh, wait a minute. Fuck the vocal first. I just want you to hear the track. The day, like, all these production things I did during the session. Like, this bass was... Okay, here's, like, the original, uh... It's not... Uh, let's see. I didn't rename anything. It should be called Reactor, because it's Reactor. But, um, kind of, unfortunately, I had to recreate this. But it's a preset now, because I saved a preset then, but I don't have Reactor 5. So I just put Reactor 6. Same preset. And there was the first uh, hint of the, uh, whatchamacallit. Now, the really important thing, <laughs> you're going to hear how different the, the, the drop sounds. Like, this is, I mean, this is the day of, literally. I'm going to unmute the vocal, too. This is all they wrote it to, by the way. There was no, like, no kick. I thought there was some, like, little... Sorry, anyways, listen Don't to this, uh, you know you're how the chorus used to happen. That's pretty neat. That's great timing. <laughs> okay, but wait, hold on. Okay, wait, I want to show you also how hilariously simple this sound is here. <laughs> it's a massive preset. With literally, <laughs> look at the track, nothing on it. <laughs> Nothing. Literally nothing. It's just brass caddy. Isn't that amazing? Oops. Oh shit. Not a hit. Alright. So moving move along. And also I think the 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 original Oh, I gotta show you something else too. I'm gonna show you another chorus idea over this. You if we did. Him, you ain't getting over him. <laughs> so this is this is the music of the drop the day we wrote it. So you can hear like there are some things, um, and this is where we're start. We're gonna start getting kind of detailed. I don't, I don't know if that stayed in the song. Okay. Like this. Look at look at look at the names of the tracks. First of all, Audio Twenty Three. It's a pad. There's like nothing. It's just like throwing shit together, you know, like uh, whatever the fuck. Okay, so. Here's, here's some cool shit. So, like, all of these things, I think this and this, and I think all this shit was bounced together by the time we get to the final project. So, I can show you, like, something really interesting about this session is that the, um, this sound, which is most of the percussion in the verse, right? Do you remember? Oh, I gotta mute the vocal. This is, still in, this is still in the final version. So what's cool about this version of the project in Cubase is that this is the original effects applied to the original um, loop. So I can show you, without the effects, this loop sounds like. <laughs> okay, 
Now, I had my task cam that day, which is like a little uh, DT40 or DR40, whatever it is. So I was recording a bunch of like tapping the back of a guitar, tapping the desk. So you can kind of tell if I pitch this up an octave. You can hear Caroline talking in the background because Emily and Caroline were just talking in the background the whole time, which is, I told them, please, the more talking, the better. Like it just sounds natural. I'm going to gate it anyways. So first step was pitching it down an octave, right? Now bit crusher. And I used bit crusher as a gate. Now this might sound slightly different because this version of Steinberg's bit crusher is a new model, <laughs> a new model, a new version of the plugin like that over the years. The original bit crusher was slightly different, but for, you know, display purposes, it's fine. So that's the first step. Then crystallizer, which doesn't really do anything. Kind of blurs the sound a little bit. All right, okay. Then stereo image is totally knocked to mono. Excuse me. Bada bing. And then finally, an EQ I like don't use anymore. The UAD Cambridge EQ. And that's that's pretty close to the final. The final, you'll see like when I go to the, f uh, the final version of the pro project, you'll see that it's, uh, why am I so fucking nervous? You'll see that it's slightly different, brighter. So like throughout the process, I mean, it's a good example of what most of these tracks go through is like, Every iteration of the song has a new, you know, things get taken out, things get improved upon, etc. So like, and that task cam loop comes from, hold on, I think I've tried, marked it. This is some really funny stuff. And I like compressed the shit out of it, so maybe you could hear it better. But like, some of this guitar stuff I chopped... <laughs> So you can see like the early hints of the rhythm. Like it's, <laughs> I don't know how much of the conversation I want to play. I don't even know what they were talking about. <laughs> um, anyways, so like you could see where the percussion, you know, the ideas kind of started on the, me just like tapping a desk or whatever. Cool. You know, that shit's, Fun. <laughs> Until I saw this, I was kind of unsure. I'm like, man, I, I think it was like a contact thing or, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like, so now like going through all this stuff, it, it brings back all the memories. So also the, uh, like this shaker, again, I didn't rename anything. I'm going to make this shit loud so you can hear it. But you can hear, <laughs> once again, Caroline and Emily talking in the background. <laughs> Mostly Caroline. <laughs> She would hit me so hard if she heard me say that. Love you, Caroline. Okay, so it was like an actual shaker there in the house, uh, hanging around, being a shaker. All right, um, what else is cool? What else is super cool? All right. So, oh, yeah, you want to hear this other, this fucking weird, like, I think at one point we, you know, it's not like this is the actual, um, I had met up with, I think Emily was out of the country, but Caroline had come to my apartment after we had, we had tried like another hook idea because I think the original um, critique of the song was like the, the hook is maybe weak or something like that. I don't know. At some point we tried this idea and then just shut it down without like really uh, doing anything. I, I It was just not that great, you but I'll play it for entertainment. Lame. And also, I think some of the second well, verse have, were different. It, it learns, Anyways, um, and some of like the first ad libs were in this project, which is cool. Anyways, that was that was cool. Um, oh, and here's something that I thought. I mean, in the, the okay, at the end of the process, this synth is like eight layers. But the first layer of this I thought was reason. It is one of those layers. 
But surprise, surprise, it's fucking FM8. 808 Tom. But like, with a ton of shit on it. Also, it's missing WoW. That's like a, a filter plugin that never... They have WoW 2 now, but WoW never did 64-bit version, so it doesn't exist anymore. But like, anyways... So the original sound of the synth... Oh my god, that hook. Mute. <laughs> Fuck that. Alright, is there anything else cool? Okay. So... That's the, uh... There was no... I don't remember if there was a... No, there was no bridge yet. Yeah, there was no bridge. There was no bridge yet. Okay. So the next... So that's the, uh... Like the day of kind of shit. All right. And for some reason, the file's called No Digging. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? I don't know. Ah, oh, all right. Tequila, help me out here. <laughs> okay. You want to know the, the chords of the pluck? Yeah, of course. Um, I, I don't know what they are. <laughs> what? Um. Look, I muted things. Cool. Don't expect me to remember the reason behind every decision. I have no idea. So this is like, oh, the. So here's an example of like something I must have printed from a uh, reason, uh, reason. Yeah. Already blending for the hook. Again, nothing is named. This is called Audio 22. I have no idea. I mean, I didn't make these songs anticipating ever having to explain them. So, you know, whatever. All right. So, fuck off. Oh, by the way, there's a good chance that uh, Cubase crashes a bunch because these files, I'm missing so many plugins, it's hilarious. I mean, that was May of 2016, I believe. All right, let's go to the, uh, I think, well, I think this is like the, this, the demo that was pitched, I believe. Yeah, this is the demo that was pitched. And at first, oh, see, here we go. I opened this one bef once before. What? It's kept missing. Oh my God, what if it, whatever, it might be missing some shit, but we'll, we'll try to make it work. But yeah, I went through these projects before and Cubase crashed so many times. It's not Cubase's fault. It's, it's really, it, <laughs> this is a lot of old shit. So, what up, Budbringer? Sorry, bro. Look at this. Shit. All right. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. This is really funny. <laughs> this is not. Uh, I the files are really disorganized. This is this is not the demo that was pitched. It's like half the half done version. So like for example, <laughs> this is really funny shit. It's not that funny. But anyways. It is so many. Same. Um. This is where we we did the chorus. Chorus. Where's the bass? Where's the bass? Thought I handled this. Tell me the bass works. <gasps> no, oh no. I know. I know. 808 Warfare. I have this. Maybe it's because I unplugged something. Oh god. It was, it was, uh, what, what was that? 808 Warfare. Like, it's an old 808 thing. Where do I have it? There it is. Come on. There we go. Clean it away. Yeah, but I modified it. What does it say? 37, 413, 7. Ah, shit. 4, 413, 32. What was this? Oh, no. <laughs> it's so different. Well, it's the original, but I know I did some, like, shit here. That's close to it. Okay. Um, all right. Let's uh, let's hear a little bit of it. I said it so many times, almost made me crazy. Oh, what the hell is that? A different lyric. What? Wrote it down and read oh, it weird. It would save me. Makes no sense. How you know what? 
No, I must have replaced this one too. Yeah. <sighs> Son of a bitch. Same, uh, same thing. Anyways. So like here we can start seeing shit gets printed. Like the 808 toms. This is a, an exhale patch contact or output. Output? Output? Is that the name? Yeah, output exhale. It makes me feel like nobody else. So let's see what the pre sounded like. One, don't pick up the phone. You know he's only calling because he's drunk and alone. Two, don't let him in. You'll have to kick him out again. Three, don't be his friend. You know you're going to wake up in his bed in the morning. And if you wonder him, I think this part's still different. Change the change the over. Oh my god, turn that fucking 808 down, bro. You ain't getting over him. I've got no rules, I count them. I've got no rules, I count them. I fucked up the 808. Anyways, so let's check it out. Let's check out the hook. This, by the way, this weird horn thing. This is from Exhale. I couldn't find the original MIDI, but it's from a patch in Exhale um, that, you know, Exhale has, like, all those insanely awesome, like, little audio cuts and shit. So it's some Exhale patch. Anyways. That's where that comes from. Oh, here was, like, an alternative um, 808 that I didn't use. It was, like, slightly more bit bit crushed. Didn't have the same kind of like the slow attack, but like here, like on the original 808. Oh fuck, I fucked up the sounds, right? But I'll show you the. Uh, let's see without without effects. Simple sine wave, clean 808. But uh, the guy that's causing all the awesomeness is Sausage Fattener. I don't even know what that compressor is doing. Guess it's compressing a little bit, maybe. Why? Whatever. So, that's cool. Because that's, like, starting to sound like the song, you know? Let's go over some of these, like, weird things. I had to replace that. It's not the original. I'm sorry. I don't have that kick plug-in anymore. Um, but let's go over, like, for instance... I want Let's check out some of these percussion uh, elements in the pre are really fun. Like, this is pieces of that uh like that shit from earlier the task cam stuff blended with some kind of shitty kick <laughs> just pieces of a, a loop chopped up let's see the original is just this so it's that chopped up different hits of it and then, like, there's a ton of little things, and, and unfortunately, they're all printed as well. But because, I don't know, I've, like, always been obsessed with not using CPU unnecessarily, so to speak. Um, whoa, what the fuck? That was weird. Did you guys just lose sound? I just lost sound for a minute. <laughs> cool. All right. Let's keep it going. Hopefully, everything, everything's fine. You heard a bzzz? <laughs> yeah, hey, we, listen. Glitches are part of the gig, the gig, man. We fucking... <laughs> there was a, an infamous stream where my audio started looping, <laughs> and I was completely unaware. Anyways, so this is like some of the effects. I'm not going to go off on a tangent. But I found this cool thing that I didn't use in the song. That was kind of hard. So, like, I know for, an ins like for instance that this is some splice uh, rise with... Uh, Either that or like that with a uh, sound shifter, the uh, sound shift, the pitch shifter waves one, like automated up and then LFO tool, sine wave swung, right? That's what this is. I know because I still do shit like that today. But anyways, there was this really cool hit when the chorus hits, which is fucking hard, but it was obviously too much. <laughs> Don't overproduce, Ian. Um, so here's like an iteration of that shaker from early earlier. You can still hear little clips of the talking. Remember? By the way, 
this is going in the splice pack. So, that's awesome. Little, uh, cut up piece of a tambourine or something. What is this? Oh, it's just a cut up piece of a loop of a tambourine. So, there's that. Um, but like, again, all of these, I think in the final project, most of these get mixed down. Oh, like for instance, here, here's a good example. The, the snare like is, is two layers. There is the, um, bamboo snare, which is famous, right? With OTT on it. Cause those were heavy abuse of OTT days. Look at that upwards all the way. Jesus, Ian. That wine guy on YouTube would be so mad at me. Um, okay, so there's this, uh, and then there's also a, a, uh, a transient, which is just MM tonal snare, but like two <laughs> together, and then together those make the stem of what is the snare. So it's a two-layered, two-layered snare. So we've we've reached a benefit. <laughs> of going through these old half done projects. And when I say half done, I mean like uh for instance the bass that I think I fucked up like on the second like there's the production is not copied over. <laughs> Look at all the shit in the first verse. There's no markers, nothing. It goes chorus. He wants what he can have but when he has it it don't matter. It's just and that's just like chaos. And like even the bass doesn't do the bendy thing. So the like original bass just walked down. And then I was like, bro, what if you like fucking, you know? <laughs> so, so there's that. Um, what else is interesting? I put interesting stuff or what I thought was interesting stuff in the blue. Set, oh, oh yeah, I wanted to show you what I meant by uh, like literally how much shit I print. Like I would, I would do something, I would do a synth of something, and then just be like, I don't want to have an instance of that synth. So like, this is serum, and I would like print it. You know, well that's not it, but I would just. Okay, none of that's it, but that's not the point. Uh, basically, I would take the synth, print it, then find another one because, you know, the, the, like, this is another example of what is just one stem in the final project. Like, I just combined all of these to make the chorus synth. So it's like... There's so many layers. Like this one I didn't use. Whatever. Ooh, that's a nice one. That sounds like uh that sounds like silence. They're all called contact. That's wrong. I don't know why they're all called contact. Anyways, all those layers are just one stem in the final project. So like for me to break down new rules, it wouldn't be cool to just go to the final project and be like, here's a stem of everything I did and combine it all. And like, here's the, uh, you know, you, you wouldn't know like what effects are, what effects are on this? Let's see. I don't know why that brick wall thing is on there. OTT, of course. Oh, zero upward. Good job, Ian. Which just means, it just means that there was some purpose in this. Okay. Uh, It, maybe at one point I was automating the wideness, but it doesn't seem like it. I don't, I don't understand why the imager is on here even. And then just a uh, LFO tool at 65. So, you know, I just fucking, you know, what is? Okay, so anything else in here that's interesting? What's this guy? Ooh, I fucking knew it, bro. See, I fucking knew it. Silenth. Does anyone remember Silenth? It's still around. It's still awesome. What a crazy cool synth. It's almost like vintage software. Uh, shit. Joe, what, what, Joe, what? 
I missed it. What'd you say? Uh. <laughs> um, the vocal chop is actually Emily. Yeah, yeah, Sherm. Joe, yes. It's actually Emily and Caroline talking. Isn't that fucking awesome? Anyways, this is a great synth. Fucking screenshot this bitch. This shit's crazy. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know how much of the original, uh, whatchamacallit, preset it is, but I guess it's key star child. I don't know. Cool. Also just called copy of contact. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. Okay. Oh, hell yeah. This is, this is interesting. This is cool. Maybe. So here's where we have the, 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 the beginning of the final iteration of the course. And this is actually the unprinted, uh, digitally shortened one. Like if I unstretch it, check it out. This is how Caroline recorded it. Let's put it on B, maybe so you can see. That's how she sang it. That's how we recorded it. And then, like, each word is kind of spaced. Because I think, I don't know why I didn't just let it all. Oh, because it's from the fucking this thing. Okay, yeah. Anyways. I took that and changed it into what then became the chorus by just like time stretching some words and shit this one too like you can hear isn't that fucking cool that's why the vocals you know and when and when we did this to uh do his vocal it was the same effect like it makes it all like the vibratos are all quick and shit. It's crazy. It's really cool. Um, so, yeah, what is this shit? Oh, yeah. The leftovers of that shitty idea. These are all like, you know, these were left here and muted because at one point I was like, oh, maybe this should go here. And then I just was like, no, it shouldn't. You know, and again, I was not thinking of, at this point, I... I yeah, I didn't know, I didn't even, I don't think I knew who Dua Lipa was yet at this point. This was like back when it was, before it was even getting pitched. Like the songwriting camp was written at was, I think, originally for Little Mix. And this is even before we pitched it to them. So. Yeah, I'll show you. I th I have, um, what? Okay, so the next, the next uh, thing, I mean, I guess we're probably, oh yeah, there was a couple other things that, that never made the track that were kind of interesting. Little production guys. Like, I don't know where any of this it just ended up not being in the song, but it's weird. It's kind of hard. Hold on. Let's see if I can just do it with the drums. Cool little weird rhythm. Whoa, a little tattoo too. Let's get it loud. That was just like, no, it's not going to work. What else is this guy? Yeah, this is like white noise. I know how I did that. See how it's going left and right? Like, you know, on Nexus, when you do the spread thing. So it's probably a white noise in Nexus. Again, these are things I, I like printed and forgot about them. So white noise and nexus with the spread all the way, and it like every time you hit the key, it goes to the left and right. You know what I mean? The the the. Anyways, didn't make it. I wonder why. What it sound like? Actually, pretty tight. <laughs> um, still no bridge on this version, right? Well, of course. Old versions of the beat. All right, let's go to the next version. I think the next thing is the, uh, wait, I'm gonna cross these off so I know where we are. All right, oh, my eyes broke. I oh, know it didn't, still sick. All right. Okay, and this is, um, 
I can't believe Cubase hasn't crashed. Oh, now that I fucking said it. Now that I said it, we're done. Um, this is the vocal session. Go look at all the missing plugins. Gosh. All right. So here we're gonna find some interesting shit. So here's another reason why this is cool. <laughs> the stuff I put on this vocal is embarrassing. And you know what? It it serves a good point though. It shows you that you could you could be a shitty producer <laughs> and still win. No, I don't think that's the lesson, but I had just discovered OTT, okay? <laughs> this is I don't feel like this is instructional. <laughs> I don't think this is the best thing, but I'll show you the original um vocal chain the day she did the vocal. Again, like you know, I printed this and then probably put more effects like on the final project this, you know, duo main is 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 probably a two track, right? Talking in my sleep at night, making oh, God the sibilance. Oh, Ian. Oh gosh, look at that. Ooh, it hurts to watch. Hundred percent. Well, hundred percent and nineteen percent. So it's not the worst. What is this even on here for? It's not doing anything. Oh, oh, the cringe. Talking in my sleep at night, making myself crazy. Wait, what's wait? There's another version playing. What the fuck? What? Wait, why do I hear two? Oh, wait. Talking in my sleep at night. Am I insane? Why is it being sent to group three? Hold on, we're discovering together. Oh, vocal synth. The fuck was I using vocal synth for? Oh, maybe for like an effect or something that I printed. Anyways, mute that. We don't need that shit. Okay. I sleep at night, making myself crazy. Okay, so the siblings was a product of phase stuff. Okay, not that bad. Anyways, and then on the master was another L3. Or it was just, it was the first instance of an actual compressor, Talking I guess. In my sleep at night, make it it's embarrassing. This is not like... Don't go home and be like, the fucking do a vocal chain. Like, don't. This is just what it was at the time, okay? Oh, shit. I never anticipated being this embarrassed. This was a mistake. All right, anyways. Here's the cool thing about this. So, these little answers right here. Okay, see, there's some, there's some processing on here we're going to go over. But, and I'll show you that. And then I'm going to show you the original vocal tracks that we did and how we recorded them. So it is. So like, again, really nothing going on here. We have uh, auto tune because remember this is the day she tracked it. So like a lot of the times I use auto tune on there just to like make it sound good real, uh, uh, you know, quickly. And then what I do is I go in and melodyne everything after. So actually, I might have I might have left these alone. The only thing on here is this compressor, which is... Is it even doing anything? Yeah, sort of. Why is the latency so much? That's insane. Oh, because of this shit. Okay, so now, on the group of the doubles, which is this, here's the... Now, this is this is where we get into, I guess, maybe some things that are fun. Avox Sybil? Ugh. Actually, that's a good... It's a good de -esser. It's a pretty good de -esser. I'm not... I shouldn't have... I shouldn't have reacted that way. I should... I should... I will maybe use this again. <laughs> um, okay, so the first... Oh, God, the UAD multiband. Wow. Look at that. Oh, it's 60% mix, but gosh, that is some reduction, man. Let's hear it unprocessed. Dark as shit. Because I was, I was knocking out a lot of the body of it, you know? Like the, the shit. Um, cause it's background vocals. I want it to feel like far away. So we have that and then we have an EQ. Just boosting highs at 16. Dipping 700. Attenuating 100. Who knows why? And then Avox Sybil. Doing anything? You can do anything. A little bit. Reducing, re reducing, reducing, uh, sibilance a little bit, whatever. Okay, so those are the, uh, 
like, oh, actually, hold on. Let's go through, like, um, well, we should go for first. Maybe, yeah. Uh... I got no rules, I got them. What's on this? Ah, these, these are just not, these are not the choices I would have made today. I don't even feel good about talking about them. They're just shitty. Look, and like, I had wow on this, which was probably distorting it a little bit. Because it had a distortion I module. No rules, I got what the f- Oh, you know, maybe- Usually, like, I would do something like this in the old days. Maybe it's just resetting the preset because it's a new version of it or something like that. Again, plugin problems. Anyways, check this out. Over here is- this folder is called half. And I was like, oh, this is like, you know, in, in order to help- Because uh, singing shit in halftime is tough. Like, sometimes you know the part and then, like, we would slow it down and then study it and then sing it really slowly. So, like, I have a version of the track. Which is at half speed. And Duo was singing. Like that's the how she tracked it. So like we'd sit there, figure it out. <laughs> like Duo and I would sit there, figure it out, like half it, then record it and feel kind of dumb recording it because it just felt so slow. And then sped it up. And like I had I think okay, cool. Let's check it out. You're going to hear the difference between the normal version of it and the tracked at half That's speed pretty. version and the tracked at half speed version, okay? This is the, the, the tracked at half speed version and on this other playlist is the normal version. Out of my mind, out of my mind. So for that one, not that big of a difference, right? Like, get out of here. Out of my mind, out of my mind. Check out the difference. Out of can we get their playlist right? Here we go. Out of my mind, out of my mind, out of my mind. So you can hear, like, it really made a difference on the backgrounds, tracking them at half speed. So many times, so many times. Like, listen to that one, right? V versus the original. So many times, so many times. It still sounds cool. It's just a v much different so vibe. Many times, so many times. So. Okay, um, what else? And that's, and it's the same thing for, um, check it out. I think in, in other parts of this take, I don't know what this is. No, wait, hold on. Uh, oh, it was another playlist, wasn't it? Yeah, I think. Here. That's how we tracked it, and it became, um... I gotta tell them to myself. Became this. I got no rules, I got them. I got... But I think the I is from another part of the... I got no rules, I got them. Oh no, this one is. I gotta tell them to myself. Yeah, the I, okay, check it out. So, this is actually the original line. But the I of, I gotta tell him to myself, was originally, I gotta tell him to myself. But I liked the scoop, so I used, I gotta tell him to myself. But yeah. I gotta tell him to myself. So the tracking at halftime really made a difference in how percussive the vocal sounded, which is cool, I think. Um, all right, what else is cool in here? Uh, let's see. How we doing in the chat room? You guys doing? You guys doing right? Fury, no, this is not live. This is recorded, pre-recorded, everything, including this whole banter. I knew. How is that? Um, most of the the vocals recorded on this was done in at NRG. Funny enough, I think it was done in oh, maybe it's Studio A. It's the same studio that they shot all the. Uh, the scenes from uh, the NWA movie, Straight Out Compton, with like Tupac and shit. That was the engineering room. That was the the live. No, not the live room. She tracked in the live room. It was tracked on some vintage like two fifty one or some crazy expensive microphone that at NRG in uh, what the fuck is that Burbank Studio City? I don't know North Hollywood. Um. Anyways, what else? What uh, there is? 
something interesting here. I do, I do, I do. So pick up the phone. What the fu- Oh, the halftime thing is playing. I do, I do, I do. So pick up the phone. You know he's only calling Sorry, clusterfuck. Oh, this is supposed to be muted. I do, I do, I do. I do, I do, I do. I don't think I used these harmonies in the final version. Anyways, here you can see also the track that, uh... So, when do a track the vocal, the track was at this point. Um, let's check out some of the hook stuff. We already- we just went over the, uh, vocal stuff, but, like, some of this shit is- Like, the count is doubled by Caroline's vocal. Here's the echo. It's like one of my favorite echoes ever. Just little pieces of the vocal on its own track. Today I would print this. All right. So the next uh, iteration of this, what is this stuff? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna do the next version because I couldn't find the source of this thing, but I'm going to recreate it for you. Okay. Let's go to the next one. So the next version is, and I'm going to, I'm going to address all the questions when we get to the final thing. I'm not just going to, I'm just trying to blow through these guys. All right. The next one is the, like one stage of the, the, like the, the second version of the, the demo or I don't know. It's just like more along the way. You know what I mean? Okay. Ooh, Cubase hasn't crashed yet, but now that I said it, it's Cubase. You're doing really well right now, despite my bullshit. Ooh. All right. Missing duck all bus or missing some plugins. Okay. Are we having a good time? Is this is this entertaining? I guess to see the process of fuckery. Local Dog asks, do you have a bus where all the vocals going in? Uh, besides the groups, no. Like maybe the lead will have its own bus, doubles will have a bus, but they all go to the stereo out. But there's times when I have done a vocal bus. I just never, you know, again, like at, at this point, even That's at this point, neat. at this point I wasn't mixing my own songs. So if I was mixing my own stuff, I would, I would do that probably more. But it's just because of the circumstances. Anyways, this version... Makes it feel like nobody else. This where like, see, the vocal is dual main is now a stem. My sleep at night, make him. It looks like I was undecided about my DSing. My sleep at That's night, pretty. make. I didn't know. I hadn't knew nothing about DSing at this point in my career. Also, what is being? I was getting sent to a reverb. Okay. He makes it feel like nobody else. See, after do attract the song, it was like, damn, this is a tune. Like her, her vocal is nice. One, so pick up the phone. You know he's only calling because he's drunk. Two. Little doubles of the one and two. One. One. So pick up the phone. Jesus, look at those clips. One. What the fuck? Look at that. That's disgusting, Ian. One. Like fade your shit. We're gonna have to re-release this. Doesn't Kanye do that? Here. Who even needs a breath there? Fuck that. One, so pick, one, so pick up. Bad production. All right. Okay, so check it out. One. Oh, that's what was missing. Oh, it makes sense now. This was missing in the earlier projects. I don't even remember this shit. You know, he's now we're, look we're looking at all the uh, elements of the pre-chorus. And like, I did prepare these files, but I didn't go through it because I wanted to kind of discover you know, with you guys, because this is 2016, or no, at this point it's 2017, Ian. That's pretty. <laughs> Who is definitely not as smart as 2021, Ian, right? The phone. More layers. Kim. A lot. Oh, okay, so check it out. You saw the massive, the original, um... Oh, why I was burping so much. Oh! Are we about good for another bean? Yeah, probably. 
Ah, I opened another one. No, freshness, lost. Abandon all freshness. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another one, okay. You remember the massive synth? I don't know if you heard earlier, but we're going over, going over the, uh, the synth, which I... He's drunk. So, now we're gonna see, again, this is one stem in the final project. So, now we're seeing additional layers that I added to that massive synth, which I think was... That sounds like the original. So that... I added this guy too. The volume's automated? Why? And there's this guy underneath. Which I think just adds the sustain. Made the notes more present. Like when a vocal's on top bench. So pick up the phone. You know he's only calling because he's drunk and alone too. Don't let him in. You have to kick him out again. Three. Don't be. Delays printed. Of course. Starting to get my shit together. So pick Ooh, let's look at this stuff. Yeah, see, this is all printed. Fuck. Like, I would just do this and then print it, but like. It's from the original demo. I think it's Caroline. And then reversed. Movie in. Thanks, you. He doesn't love me, so I tell myself. I tell myself. Woo! Printed. Uh, we saw this delay, though. Oh, this is like a bunch of shit together. Okay, so it's Caroline, that layer of Caroline doubling the count him into myself with the echo, like I made that one stem. So, you know, it's a strange thing to combine, but I did it. Whatever, who cares? All right. Uh, ooh, we're getting some interesting shit here. I printed the 808. That's probably because of... So the reason I printed the 808 is because of the fading in and out. Like I, I wanted to, like if you notice, let me find the kick. Is this a kick? Maybe it was the kick. Here's it. Where's, where's the kick? Here's the kick. So look, like the kick hits right here, and it, I'm, I'm basically like manually side chaining. You know, like I just wanted to. It looks like I, I selected. I selected all the notes from the bounce of it and like did my own envelope. Like if I wanted it to go even more behind the, 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 the kick, basically I made a cut at every kick. Oh God, why did I unmute that weird? This thing. Although it's probably an important part of the kick for the hook. Actually gives it some presence in the, in the chorus. There's the talkie shaker. That's just hard. That's missing. I don't know what the fuck that is. Um, anyways, so... Fuck. That's pretty neat. I forgot what I was talking about. Oh yeah, we're gonna go over the fill. Okay, we're gonna go over that. Um, yeah, like, there's some... That's all this neat. shit in the original, or in the final project is, is stemmed together. Like, this is... There's two two kicks in the in the hook and like one smaller one in the verses. Okay, here's another stem of all that shit from the previous project mixed down. Which is a slightly lighter kick, but here you can see another kick is blended in. Oh, waveforms. <laughs> yeah, that. So, and then the chorus kick is the, let's see, it's the layers. Plus. That's pretty neat. Like a roomy. Uh -huh. Nice combo. Cool. Wait, let me mute the, uh, That's pretty neat. Let me mute the vocal real quick. Let's give the producer some love. Oh. 
Oh, yeah, we did. We went over that. Okay, awesome. I wanted to make sure we showed the layers of the snare because, like, this is now a stem. And it sounds like the bamboo, uh, it's the bamboo sample. And I was like, man, I don't know how I got all the attack. Maybe I, like, increased the transient. Nah, bro, it was a layer. We discovered that last session. But what a, an aggressive, like, geez, look at that. Clip much? Very intense. All right, let's go over the, the fun, the guy. The little guy, Ed Rolla. <laughs> That's it. There it is. All right, anyways. No, I'm just kidding. So, this is, uh, this wasn't done yet. Like, I hadn't really... I remember there being more stuff, eventually. You know what I miss about this mix? I don't know if, like, it... it Maybe the original lost it, but the, the synth? There was this... Like, this is a combination of, of, you know, four or five things, but the attack on this was outrageous. Like, listen to how fucking, like, ka it is. It's crazy. It's, like, distorting bad. And, like, if you listen to it in this hook, it really snaps, and it's cool. What a snap. Sample of the, the horn guy, horny guy. By the way, this whole uh, manual side chaining of your 808, I think, I, or like your bass, sometimes it's cool. Sometimes it's cool, you know? It's uh, a little more level of control. It That's definitely crazy. takes a ton more time to do, but sometimes it's, it's, it's fun, you know? All right. What else from here is interesting? <laughs> These are just like random, like all this shit was probably put together in, oh, I know why, okay, yeah. All this is combined in the final uh, guy. But like all these effects, check these out. That's the, uh, I do, I do, I do. This shit. That's what I meant, I never learned. Sorry, the I do is another one, okay. Like this is that fill, the layers of it. It used to be so good. What else we got? Oh, that's uh, Nexus's. Uh, it's either printed, but some of the patches I can identify. This is, uh, it's like Voc Cuts 2 or 1 on, on Nexus. That's pretty neat. That guy has interrupted me so many fucking times tonight. <laughs> but I appreciate every subscription. There's that guy. What else we got? I don't know. Some fucking fading inversion. Probably some Nexus patch. But it all it all works together. What's something with this guy's? I don't know what that is. That's pretty. I uh. Oh yeah, it's a reverse reverb going into the one. So, it looks like, yep. I probably did the word one and then, re re uh, oh no, I took the track of the doubles, which I think was this. This thing, uh, this little guy right here. Man, cooperate. One. That's pretty neat. Uh, again! Thank you for your subscription. Okay. So like this is before I reversed it. And like the one, well this version of the file has the one reverse, but you can hear if we reverse it. And then there's another. Oh, a snare roll. Love that. Or, uh, 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 is that a roll or a hit? Roll, okay. That sounds like the that sound samples. So there's a lot of really weird, uh, tons of layers of weird, stupid shit. 
Like, I don't even remember. <laughs> Those little things, they make a difference sometimes. Um, what else, what else, what else? Oh, even more added to the... Look, at they're all called contact. It's because all these patches were in contact, and I would just render right away, boom, and then it would just call it contact. It'd be like a, a string patch or something, and I think this is a... It sounds like a string patch, but it sounds like the, the sampler in contact was set to like pro or something like that, you know, when you can like time manipulate. You son of a bitch. Calm down. This is a pizzicato string, but I'm pretty sure the time was increased. These are just full on strings. Pitched vocal. It's all printed because it's it's probably from exhale. But all of them together are such a fucking vibe. That little meow, 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 like you hear this. It is such a weird source of excitement in this hook. It's strange. Or in this pre, it's crazy. Like, listen to this shit. And then it gets like crazy. Like that shit is fire. No, 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 no. All right. So, oh yeah, yeah. Check this out. Okay, 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 okay. We're almost done with this one. Okay, so, ah, uh, I promised I would do this. I'm gonna do it kind of live, I guess. So I have never been able to find the original stem that I combined this. All these uh. The end of the song has, okay, so sorry, the terrible, I'm doing a terrible job of uh, explaining. At the end of the song, there's this vocal. Which is something I made. So I'm gonna make it for you. <laughs> um, I kind of like loosely recreated the, uh, it comes from this. Cause he's drunk and alone too Don't let him in Let's uh What is it? So Don't let him Oh shit it's already Wait a minute This isn't it Hold on Wait didn't I Didn't I prepare this? Yeah oh here we go sorry <laughs> Okay uh Don't let him in Don't let him in No this isn't right this isn't right. Hold on, let me go get the actual thing. Hold on. He's drunk and alone too. Don't let him Sorry, it's supposed to be this. Maybe I printed it again. That's really weird. I thought I had this like kind of semi-prepared, but I didn't. All the better. So. Okay, so. That's pretty neat. So. Check it out. We're gonna do the. We're gonna like kind of. Oh, that's why it's already pitched, you stupid idiot. The plugins are on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's the beans. Here's the actual thing. It's taken from uh this. Sorry for that. Sorry about that. Don't let him in. You have to. That's the pre. Don't let him in. So I put on little altar boy. Sorry. So this is so after little altar boy. Actually, let's take it off. Let's get the, the rhythm right. Oh, I'm going to cheat and do this little slide function in Cubase. Um. Don't be, don't be his friend. Don't be his friend. Don't. Oh, my bad. That's gonna go over here and out of here. So don't be as fray, don't be as fray, don't, 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 don't. I don't need more of the D. Don't be as fray, don't be as fray, don't, 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 don't. Okay, so little ultra boy. 
pitched it up. Don't let him in, don't let him in, don't, don't, and then don't, Valhalla. Don't, don't be his friend, don't be his friend, don't, 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 don't. And so, there's another thing in the stem that's like this other like vocal pitched up really high, but that's the the gist of the. Uh, Um, anyways, yeah. <laughs> Fucking. I was so good. <laughs> At one point. Um, uh, yeah, so that's about, that's about it. Now we're gonna go to the actual project and we're gonna address some vocals. Let me see if there's any other interesting shit here. What else? Oh, I, I put it on blue. Did I do anything else? Let me just make sure. Dun, dun, dun. Um, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Why is that blue? Not for any specific reason, probably. Okay. What's this guy? Oh, yeah, a little ear candy. Oh, these are cool, too, because some of these are combined in uh, the, the project, in the final project. So, like... Another instance of ducking manually. This little white noise. Combined with, these are the little ear candy guys. It's so like that's just like verb and a compressor on some random samples or whatever. What's this shit? This is that bit crush stuff. You can hear it's a little bit brighter than the one from the original uh, demo. So, what else we got? Where's that one annoying ass loop? This loop is like, this one bugs me. Look at, listen to those clicks. Like, who the fuck? What the, what the fuck? Anyways, sloppy, bro. Real sloppy. Um, anything else interesting here? Um, these are some more effects. Oh, we already went over these. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Okay, let's go to the next. On with the, uh, okay, and the next thing, cross it out. Um, the next one I think is the final, uh, Final guy. Oh man, we're due for a crash. A lot of, uh, Joe, a lot of that stuff comes from Exhale. I used to use Exhale so much. Should probably, you know, like you, you, have, you ever like just, I just don't use it because other stuff rep, like came out that, or I don't know. I don't know why I don't use it anymore. It was so cool. I should, I just got to. You know, it's like, I think, you know, producers like me and most of us have like, ooh, a new toy. And then we forget about like the oldies, the oldies and goodies, you know? Um, let's check my audio real quick just because. Because I'm traumatized. Dun, dun, dun. Quick, just because. That's pretty neat. Because I'm traumatized. What's wrong with my, vo dun, my dun, audio? Quick, just cause... Does it sound weird? That's pretty neat. I'm traumatized. Well, maybe traumatized. it's just the quality of the fucking thing. Whatever. All right. Let's keep it keep it rocking. All right. Let's keep it rocking. All right. Let's keep it rocking. So this is the That's project. Oh, my God. I appreciate your subscription. This is the project that went to mix. Oh, thank you for... Thank you, Molly. Thank you, local dogs. Um... That is the name, okay. <laughs> so this guy is probably where it gets uh, more like what the actual record was. Chopped to shit. Chopped. Okay, so look. Here's the processing on, on like that, for instance. You know, there's there was processing from the previous project. How has this not crashed yet? I'm shooketh. So, like, the chain on this is 
Radiator, Poltec Pro, LA3A. I got no rules, I count them. I got no rules, I count them. Like, I, you know, this is the shitty thing about going over this is that, like, maybe some of the radio effect or the EQing happened. Uh, wait, there's a strip to it? What's on the strip? Ooh, envelope shaper. Oh, that's interesting. I got no rules, I oh, my God. Shut the fuck. Thank you for your subscription. I got no rules, I count them. That's interesting. I don't even remember doing that. But it makes sense. Good job, Ian. I got no rules, I count them. Ooh, the, uh... Love that. I got no rules, I count him. Oh, the, verse, the, the verb that disappears. I got no rules, I count him. I always loved, like, I remember loving back then how the vocal went from spacey to, like, close to you. That was, like, one of the first times I was like, oh, my God, I love violating, like, a sense of space in production because it just makes shit sound so, like, oh, pay attention, you know, because you're not expecting to be in a dark cave and all of a sudden you're in, like, you're, she's right there in front of you. And it's like, oh, fuck, it's Dua Lipa, you know? Out again. See, they're just, these are just stems of all those strings. Where'd the cello go? One, don't pick up the f Oh, what is that? One, don't pick One. There's something here. One. That I love. One. 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 Don't. Okay, check it out. I always like I was like I want because I, I didn't know what it was, but on the on the on the this dubbed version of one which is like an octave down, one. the bass at the end of the one has this effect when it's in the mix that it sounds like a whoa. and I always loved that I'm like whoa I'm so cool I, how did I do that and I never did because it was a complete accident, but like one. that little bass one. in the mix one. sounds like a boom, one. which is hard as fuck. Sorry, God, I'm cussing too much. One, don't pick up oh, the phone. Oh, this is so hard. All right, so here, this is another. Um... Oh gosh, these are not choices I would have made. Ooh. Hey, humble, humble yourself with your old self. What the fuck does that even mean? Um, here's the chain of those. I Ooh, the clicks. I got it to love to myself. Ugh. I got no Doesn't matter. I got him. Literally, none of this shit matters. <laughs> no one's gonna be like, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna listen to that Dua Lipa song, but there is a click in the vocal on one of the tracks. Therefore, I am not patronizing. No one's gonna do that shit. No one cares. No one gives a shit. All right, what else is there in here that is interesting? That's pretty neat. Oh my God, shut the fuck up. Thank you for your subscription. All right, what else we got? What else we got? Okay, so we did the vocal thing. Oh, I set it up. I set it up here. Oh, I set it up in this project too. Oh, that was for when I did the thing. Yeah, okay. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> I forgot that I remembered to do that. <laughs> All right, let's see if there's anything else. Cause okay, but there's one more thing we're gonna I'm gonna play. Oh wait, I gotta th go through the fucking uh, questions. Okay, let's go through the questions. Let's see how do I do this. So let me say, drag you to your own window. A lot of bang. All right. So Soul State posted this. Hey, at some point in time, Ian's gonna break down new rules. What do you think? Um. So I'm gonna just like quickly skim skim over these questions because I guess a lot of them probably got answered like throughout the the um the the breakdown or whatever. But uh, I mean we didn't go into that much detail on this version of the product. Like, I guess I should run through a few things. I'm now remembering there's a bunch of stuff like in the fill. Check this out. So there's more of this loop now in this version. Like. Listen. Great little. And this fill, by the way, is if I break one of these apart, I think we can see the original the, the source of the fill. The source of the fill is this. I don't know where this is from. I think it's a like a drum line drum line sample from some contact thing. 
Again, this is 2016. I don't know. But that's the, uh, the source. And from that is cut that. And all those little changes in um, pitch are, if you, if you look, there's like, vo okay, hold on, let me make it bigger. There's volume automation. Like this is the, so it goes da -da -da, instead of da -da -da, you know? And if you notice, there's this little transpose thing up here in Cubase where it's like you can real-time transpose things. So like this hit right here is transposed up three. So it goes, you know, what's this one? Four. This one's up four. So like if we zeroed them out, it would sound like not as. So they're, they're pitched. Oops. They're pitched to like, I don't know, <laughs> sounds more like it should. Okay. So that's like the fill. And <laughs> everyone's always like, how did you come up with that fill? Like, it's so weird. Does it tame, change time signatures? Like, no, of course not. Like it, it, it was, it was inspired by Skrillex, something he did. I mean, he, he there's a lot of songs where like he'll, his, his hook will like, right when you think it's supposed to hit, doesn't exactly hit. And then it comes in on some offbeat. Like it was something he did that I was emulating. So that was how the, uh, also just the decision to do that was part of the same decision to cut the reverb at the end of the vocal. It's violating space. It's like, you have this like dreamy, I got new rules. And then it's just like, you're out. And all of a sudden you're getting these like, that's like totally jarring. And, and, and then it just fucking explodes, you know, like the reason these, okay. The reason I think this, like streaming this shit is important is not because of like the, the literal, um, techniques or like, here's how I, how I cut this or, you know, it's, it's more the benefit of, of any live stream of like a producer that maybe you like, or like want to, you know, study his technique or whatever that you should pay, always pay attention to the reason behind their decisions. That's the most important shit. Not your fucking like, Oh, I always compress at this ratio or I always use this attack speed. There's not your, you know, like this preset is my go-to for blah, blah, blah. That's cool too. Like, you can be very by the book and, you know, whatever. I don't think most people are. I mean, it's a balance. But, like, this, the reason, like, part of the inspiration of this idea came from the, oh, it would be cool if everything just stopped, you know? You know what I mean? Like, that's the reason behind the decision. And then that, that like, aspiration for, for, for a moment like that turns to the inspiration for the production, you know? Like, I want this, like, I got new rules to be all dreamy and then... All of a sudden, she's right in front of you, and it drops into another, like, crazy thing. I got no rules, I count them. And then we're back, you know? I got no rules, I... Violating space. <laughs> the only good way to violate space. So, there's that. What is this? Guy? Oh, yeah. I'm getting over him. It's actually a really important texture in there. By the way, this is not obviously Josh Goodwin's mix. His mix brings a lot of this shit out way better, obviously. But like this texture comes back in the drop. I'm gonna mute the vocals for one moment because it's not about that right now, okay? Listen to what this texture adds to the chorus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna solo it first, right? Listen to what it does in the chorus. It's like white noise. You can hear it. You can hear it. It's low, but you could still hear it. It's just at the point of perception, percep perceivable, you know? But it's... I think the way it's copied probably has something to do with the uh, the vocal, but we're not listening to that right now. Oh, okay. So now 808 Warfare works. Uh. Oh, I guess this is the the one. No, but this has to be. Oh yeah. Okay, hold on. So now this is the finished version of the 808. Here's the chain of that. Why is this equal to bypass? Oh, okay. I don't know why that was bypassed. Anyways, here's the uh, chain Saturn. See, we added Saturn. So this is, um, 
I didn't print a stem. Like this is left over from the old project, but I added Saturn and another compressor apparently. Oh, it's just a side chain. So that's that guy. I don't know why there's two copies of it. That's really weird. 808 Warfare, old school. Oh, I got to turn that noise down. Anyways, that's the 808. The same shaker from the first day. I feel I, I feel like I'm I'm missing some things. Um, hold on, let me. We got to get to the questions. It's getting boring. Oh shit! I gotta turn that down. Hold on. It was at negative 17. You can see like the synth lost that bite. You remember how freaking like crazy the attack was on the synth in that previous demo? For some reason, I, I took it out or I just fucked it up. Like it didn't, it doesn't sound as, it doesn't sound as percussive. And I think it's maybe not to f interfere with the vocal, but I don't know. I just, I'm kind of bummed that we lost that attack. This looks like I cut it up and then printed it. Where did it go? Is it, hold on. Where's that original ass synth? Well. Ugh. It is what it is. You know, the horn used to run throughout the whole thing, but now it runs muted or muffled. Again, this is just a stem that's printed, but in the original demo, it like goes for like the entire song. It's really annoying. All right. So let's see if there's any questions that we didn't really address. Um, okay. Real Justin asks, how much of New Rules pumped your career? A lot, a lot. It helped it a lot. It was very, it was it was a cool hit because also like, Duo was popping off in the UK and I think until New Rules, she wasn't, she didn't have much of a presence in the US. And it, I will say though, it really helps that, you know, the, the video went viral on YouTube. Like that helped the song be a hit. I'm not... I, I think the song, there's a chance the song could have been a hit without that video, but you got to admit that video did a lot for the song. It did a lot to like communicate the essence of the song, which is so important. So you got to consider that wonderful video. Um, all right. Let's look at these questions and see if there's anything that... Uh... Yeah, see, like we, we kind of address most of these. The 4-4 horn really brings the drop together. Tell us about it. It's Exhale. Was it always part of the beat? Uh, yeah, for most of the track, as you've seen in like the earlier versions, um, the process of writing the vocal, like, oh, you know what? Interesting question. Because <laughs> I'm going to, well, I'm not going to close this yet, but I'm going to go back to the original session just to show you guys something really kind of kind of cute. I had my task cam the day that we wrote New Rules, which is, uh, whatever, we, we talked about this. But it's a little personal recorder if you weren't here for the first half of the stream. Oh, that 42 is like butter. It's like butter. Thank you, UC, for getting it for my birthday. Very nice guy. All right, take your time, Cubase. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I had my task cam. And I happened to record some of the conversation that Emily, Caroline, and myself had. And there's this funny moment where I was playing with a shaker and I put Soothe on. I, I like, look the amount of processing I did to this clip. Like, you'll understand if you hear it raw, which I'll play it for you. Like, raw is inaudible. Like, you can't even hear the talking, but I did a bunch of things to it. So you can hear the talking. I just compressed the shit out of it. Anyways, I bounced it and I put Soothe on it because this is when I was recording a shaker. So <laughs> here's uh, when I when I when you ask like what was writing 
the vocal, like, there is this beautiful moment I found in the task cam where it was like the beginning of the session. I was, Caroline and Emily had, had just met and I was just messing around and, you know, I was like, oh, this, this is my task cam. I, you know, it's, I'm not trying to be creepy, but I record everything because blah, blah, blah. And, uh, Emily was talking about, and I just want to give a little preface before I play the clip because it's, it's, it's hard to understand all of it, but I'm going to try to give you the gist and maybe you can understand it. But Emily's saying something like, you know, sometimes uh, girls feel things that they can't say. And like, you know, she was talking about something obviously important, you know, and, and, and here's my dumb ass, just like over there shaking, you know, a little shaker and playing around with the mic and fixing levels and stuff. And I'm like... You know, in my essence of troll, I'm like, well, hmm, what about guys, though? You know, and like, I remember Caroline and Emily like looking at me and just being like, dude, shut the fuck up. And then I got like so spooked and I was like, oh my God, this session's going to go terrible. <laughs> so that's this moment. So maybe you can decipher it, but it's it's really kind of cute. Like the guys, but it didn't really work. Uh, no, I don't even think we should talk about that shit. I just mean like, there's a lot of shit. Girls feel that they're, like, scared to say. Here, here comes dumbass. What about men, though? <laughs> we have it hard. You guys have a platform. You guys have a platform. <laughs> I don't feel sorry for you. Sit right down. <laughs> you can sit down. <laughs> this is basically the birth of the sass of new rules, I think. <laughs> when my dumbass was like, what about us guys, though? We have it hard. I was obviously joking. You know, and then... Her, Emily and Caroline were like, dude, sh like, first of all, sit down. You have a platform already. Like, and then I was just like, I got so spooked. What about men, though? We have it hard. You guys have a platform. You guys, you I don't feel sorry for you. Sit right down. Now. <laughs> you can sit down. So I stopped shaking and sit down. <laughs> this session is He's gonna like, go. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It was then at that moment that I realized I will be the punching bag. But here's the cutest part. So I was starting to like feel a little ganged up on, which is, you know, I'm the victim here. <laughs> um, and then I asked them like if they'd ever worked together. And no, they're like, no, we've never worked together. And then Emily's like, but it already feels right. And it's so cute. Okay. <laughs> Have you guys never worked together before? Have you guys never worked together before? Oh. It's already really right though. It's great. It's really right. It's already re really right, though, which is so sweet. So that's part of what it was like to write the vocal or whatever. Uh, mind behind creating pre creative process, creating a world banger. How he experiments and decides what's going to work or not. Well, you can kind of see that. World banger. I bang worlds. That's a cool phrase. It feels like some metal band or something. Um, sample vocals are a hook. Yeah, we went over that too. Okay, cool. Drum mixing, we kind of displayed most of that. I mean, Josh really did the mixing, so. Um, let's see. How to know if you've overproduced something or made it just... Oh, this is a good question. So, Nabra asks, How do you know if you've overproduced something or made it complex and interesting enough for the listener? This is like... I think you get better at this the more you... Uh, you know, produce stuff and songs and work with, you know, bands and singer-songwriters, etc. Um, at this point, I've quantified it to, like, the idea of the rate of information. Like, don't give your listener too much information. I think, like, once you get a feel for what too much or too little information is, that becomes much easier. So, a lot, like, in, you know, in my early days... I found this band, the Jakes. I just say I found them because I was a judge at a battle of the bands, and they were already kind of discovered. I mean, they would, they would, these, <laughs> the Jakes, who are now called Young the Giant, were going to be the massive band they always were going to be, no matter what avenue or what dumb drunk idiot producer met them first. But the first time I produced, I did their EP when they were called the Jakes, I overproduced it so much, and it like actually hurt them. They're, they're wanting to come back to me after they got signed. Um, you know, that and U2's producer wanted to work with them, but I, you know, same, same thing, same reason, same, uh, you know, influence on their decision. But basically it was that project that made that, that taught me, you know, you really, you're here, you're here to serve the song, not just flex on production. And 
I'm still guilty of flexing on production sometimes. Like, you know, Selena's look at her now is a fucking, it's producer porn. You know, it's caffeine fueled producer porn. It's, it barely like, <laughs> there's barely a balance there. But like, for the most part, you know, I, I, I want to serve the song. So like, if something's distracting me from the vocal, that's when I start to think, ah, oh, maybe it's overproduced. Maybe there's too much rhythmic information that's going to distract the listener. Maybe that's overproduced, you know? Think of it like a rate of information. Anyways. Uh, how do you make that fill transition in the chorus work so smoothly? I don't know. It just is. All right. Most of these we went over. Okay. So anywho, um, let's get, let's take some questions from the chat. Is there any, any questions that you guys have that maybe I didn't cover? Cause I know there was a lot of shit in this, uh, thing. <laughs> when you're like, oh, did you voice know that? Oh, I can't remember, like... I can't remember. Really we're not listening to 2016 Ian. <sighs> All right. Budbringer. Oh, I didn't even ask, read your question before I said that. Shit! As a pro I, I have to screen my questions. As a professional producer, can you talk about your ears and taste versus your skills? Whoa. it's a good-ass question, bro. Um... I think you go through a lot of phases of like arrogance and being humbled and arrogance and being humbled. But, and, and, you know, at one point you're going to forget how to listen to music. You're just going to analyze everything. That's all ego shit. The quicker you can shut the fuck up, man. Thank you for your subscription. The quicker you can dismiss that kind of thinking, you can learn to listen to music again, especially like if you, all you do is work on music, listening to music can be a different experience depending on, you know where you're where you're at in your pro in your journey, I guess. So that's pretty neat. Uh, okay. So basically, at this point, I I know how to listen to. I've I've learned really well how to dismiss ego. I used to hear shit and just get either jealous or be like, "Fuck, I I feel like this. I'm never gonna be like, you know, not, not, this is too good. Like I could never do it." So, I mean, I would listen to Skrillex and be like, "I should quit. Like this is done." But that's so dumb. Like, now I listen to, to, you know, I got past that. I listen to Skrillex now and I'm like, oh, wow, there's so much you could fucking do. Or like, you know, listen to any record and get inspired. I'm like, oh, I've never thought about doing it that way. Like, you know, you gotta, whatever. You gotta learn how to listen to music again like you did before you were so freaking precise and shit. What was your second question? Shit, I lost it in the chat. <gasps> Look at all these questions. Oh my God, where did it go? I lost you, but, oh, there you are. Two, you said you don't really know, do it before this. Can you say something about the time between not knowing and, get her, and her getting to Billboard Top 10? Well, she's fucking awesome. I mean, when I heard her voice, I was like, freaked out. All baritone and like, completely identifiable. You know, I was sold. And she's fucking pleasant as hell. That doesn't hurt that she's a great person. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. I'm with Team Emily Ian F guys, says Sarah. I, psh, no problem. All right. Um, Molly Otto said the Poltec was your main compression. No, the Poltec was, was probably an EQ I use a lot. Um, all right. How long did it take for you to produce it, record it, and finish it? I mean, it was probably over the process, over the course of like six months. But, you know, you make a little progress and then things slow down. You make a little progress. Like, we wrote it in 2016. I think it ended up coming out in 2017. I don't know. A long time. I should go over the dates. Uh, shit. There's so many questions. Um, ask your question again. I'm going down to the bottom of the chat. But not too fast. Do you ever feel like you forgot? To... Do you ever feel like, ooh, this is a good question. Dr. Pop SPG asks, do you ever feel like you forgot how to do certain stuff or kind of not in top shape, um, like production wise, how do you recover from that? Um, you gotta, it really helps to like, I've discovered things over and over again. Cause I forget them. You gotta be patient with yourself. And if you, once you discover it enough, you'll, you'll retain it. I found that actually streaming and talking about my process has reminded me of some of those things, especially in like, you know, there's a lot of things I did in, in new roles that I don't do anymore. That's like, oh my God, shut up. Um, 
Fuck, I lost my train of thought. You thank you for your subscription. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Um, what was the what was the thing I said I was gonna do? There's something we were going over something, and I was like, oh, I should do that more. Like, there's an example. Like things just like, or you know, silent. Yeah, like I don't use silent as much anymore. I'll probably go to Omnisphere instead. And you know, forgive yourself because there's just so much shit that like, you know, and I, I used to try to make text files of like techniques.txt and you know, write down like, oh, I have a great idea for for this, but at the speed that like you're working when you're when you're feeling inspired you're just fucking going like most of those weird percussions and shit that are just bounced they're like oh that's cool bounce it oh that's cool bounce it like you know i remember seeing a noisia interview and they were just like they were they were talking about being how to not be so precious and they were like we just render shit so we have to stop working on it and that changed my life changed my life it's like you know it's good <coughs> um what else oh god Track formers. I'm thinking about mixing part though. In what state did you send it to mixing? In this state that you're hearing it right now. So like it sounded like this. See? <laughs> Hold on, let me load the session so at least I could play something if I need to. Um, it sounded like you hear the right right now. Like I I made these are all the names of the actual individual mix stems. Also, I'm pretty sure these. Let's have another. I'm pretty sure these stems leaked online a long time ago. How, I don't know, and also I don't care. But the file names are the track names from this session, I believe. I think. I think. So, yeah, it sounded like, uh, like you're hearing. Um, that's that. Um, Kathy Roquefort asks... Do you have any workflow or mentality to help you move a song along and not get series of loops? Um, I struggle with that shit. It depends on the phase of the creation process when I'm just making tracks or fucking around. Like I am on most of my streams, those will stay in 8-bar. Um, I know people get pissed because they're like, you, you never finish a track. It's like, that's not the point, right? I'm starting ideas for when I go into sessions with like Lizzo or, you know, another artist or Dua and... You know, I'm like, oh, I have this like little loop, you know, and I'll play that. And that's like, cool, let's dive into that because I want to like do some of the creating with the artists and be like, you know, let's change the chords or like this. So uh, <clears throat> I have that problem because of that process for me. Like sometimes my objective is not to just make a whole song by myself. So I think that would be a good exercise, though, for a personal growth kind of angle, which I'm going to try to do in the next stream. Uh Okay, let's look for some other. Let's do a few more. Should I order pizza? I'll decide in a minute. I don't know. I don't know. I'm really having a good time right now. I don't know when the next stream is. I apologize. Work will dictate. Um, let's see. Dawson Purcell asks, can you talk about going from bedroom producer to getting into songwriting camps? working with top liners and getting published. Well, some of those are out of order. Um, everyone's story is different, Dawson. My personal process was, you know, I, I'd been fucking around with computers and music since like 1998. Forget, don't forget, I'm 39 years old. I just turned 39. Like, I'm I'm old compared to most of the, you know, I'm on the, I've, I've been, I'm a fucking dinosaur. I feel like a dinosaur at this point. Like, I graduated college in 04 and I was producing local bands my partner is my now manager, Dan, and we were recording bands together. And like, eventually we started working with bands that were on Fearless Records and Hollywood and Drive Through Records. And this was the Warp Tour years, you know? So I was doing a lot of like kind of shitty screamo rock bands. And then like finally did, uh, you know, we almost got this one band signed, but the label didn't like the band necessarily. But they were like, hey, Ian, we like your production, though. Would you want to work with blah, 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 blah? And they were just like bands that had just gotten signed, you know? at the relatively same place that like an upcoming producer would be, but a band, you know? So through that process and um, working with, you know, starting to work with bands that were on labels like Fearless, Warren Chapel reached out in 2010 and was like, look, we'll sign you to a publishing deal. I think it was like 50 grand or something. It was a very small deal. And, uh, you know, it just built from there. And this is like 2010, maybe 2011. And then... When you, you know, after I got the publishing deal, I started getting put into like sessions 
And that was like years of learning. At first, I approached pop music like I'm, I'm going to crush this shit. Like I'm so much smarter than all these fucking clowns. Obviously, the clown was me because it was a few years before, a couple years before I think like I even got a cut. I thought I was so cool and I was terrible. I was terrible at music. Terrible at, at pop. Pop is like, seems so asinine sometimes, but it, it, really, it really is like a complicated thing to, I don't know, whatever. That's another discussion. Anyways, so it's a real slow climb. That was the point. Uh, Fury17 asks, Ian, do you bounce right after you make the sound? Don't you feel like it could be the kind of ruining the creative moment because of the wait time of rendering? It doesn't take that long to render at all. Oh, no, you're right. I'm totally uninspired. No, I'm just kidding. No, it doesn't take long. That's not, that's not that much time. So, no. I, I think it helps me with commit my commitment problems. <laughs> so I'd stop fucking with a hi-hat or something, you know? Because that's how you lose yourself. Um, all right. Uh, Local Dogs asks, How are you not scared to layer all those instruments? Vocal reverb dis disappears after one synth layer. That's just a mix thing, man. You can fix that easy. Um, do most of your ideas die as loops, or do you usually take them into a more full track? Uh, most of them die as loops. Speaking of which... That's pretty neat. Oh my god, thank you. That was good timing. I like that one. Let me show you some tracks that no one ever writes to, because they suck. So, like... <laughs> these names are so stupid. I'm gonna play you some shitty beats. I'll, I'll give an example. Like, look at the size of these files. Like, this is two, an MP3 that's, that's like, what's this? A drum loop. Sometimes it's like, that's all I'll bring to a session. That one never gets written to because it sucks. This fucking sucks too. Like, what is this even? <laughs> what an idiot. I, I, you know, sometimes I'd bounce them just so I can remember it and see if I wanted to work on it anymore. I think that was in from a stream. It's just a weird loop. Like, a lot of these are going in the splice bag, funny enough. But, like, sometimes people are like, yo, that's tight. Let's put some chords on that. Like, again, this is why most of my streams end in not a full track. It's like they'll end in something like that, and I'll print it and just be like, you know what? Maybe this is a vibe for one uh, someday. Ooh, can't play that one. I don't know what that one's for. Looks like Haley. Oh, I love. Oh, this fucking beat. Oh, I'll give you a little taste. No, not this one. It's 23. Stage 23. Where is it? Yeah, this shit. That's all I'm going to give you. That shit is crazy. Like in Malibu, I, I, uh, Lizzo sent me a, um, <laughs> a TikTok. She was like showing it to me. It was like really funny. And, and I was sitting there. <laughs> and I, and I did some things. Ooh, hey bitch, I don't care if you do not fuck with me. Just stay, stay off my, my shit, IG. please, bitch. I don't care if you not fucking with me. Just stay off my IG. I do not care if you ain't fucking with me. Bitch, I swear I don't give a fuck. Bitch, I do not care if you not fucking with me. Bitch, you may. Anyways. That's, I like the drums on it. That's why I bounced it. I was like, oh, I have those drums. I love those drums. See if anything else funny. Ooh, can't play a live one. All right, next question. Ah, how Indie Rock asks, how married are you to demos? How often do you fight for shit in a room with writers? <laughs> First, kill your babies. <laughs> Dark. Um. Uh, you know, you gotta not be too attached, obviously, because things change. Um, for instance. I thought I I did a, like a, a a really good. I mean, there's this one artist I'm working with right now, whose name I'm not gonna mention because it's not important. But you know, big fucking artist, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and I thought I did a fucking great job. And homie was like texting me, <laughs> can't wait to hear the bounce, blah, blah blah. And I sent it to him, <laughs> no response for two weeks. <laughs> and then I hit I went you know I asked my my friend I'm like yo like did you hear what you know yada yada said about the track like he hasn't responded and he's like oh yeah yeah it doesn't really fuck with it like he wants you to do this and this and you know we're gonna get in and hopefully fix it but like I am very attached to that demo but I have to like be like okay I gotta you know maybe not 
be so attached because it's definitely going to get changed. So it's an, it's a, you got to be really not precious and be okay with people not liking what you did because that shit happens all the time at every level of whatever level you think you're at in the music industry. Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay. okay, track formers. Technical question. When you bounce the files for mixing, how you bounce the send effects? You bounce them to their own channels? Yeah, sometimes. Mostly, most of the time I bounce like reverbs down to channels because I want like full control over the reverb. I don't just want to use a send. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like using sends very often. They, they always get printed before. Like I at least want to give the mixer an option to use my reverb. Maybe they have a better idea of how to use or what reverb to use. But I'm usually just like, yo, please use my verb if you don't mind because I like it. Um... Okay. Is it normal getting ghosted like that? Yes, all the time. It's nothing personal. It's business. Also, sometimes artists are like, like this. This artist I, I know is just a fucking sweetheart, and like maybe doesn't want to be like, ooh, uh, huh. you know. And I'm not gonna press him for, you know. I'm just gonna. If I was a good producer, I tell myself, if I was a good producer, I'd be able to like work through this and fucking make them. You know, it just goes back to the old running a studio day. Make the client, you know, like the song being good and me loving it and the client loving it, or the artist in this case, those are not mutually exclusive. If I was a good producer, I'd find a way to Venn diagram that bitch. All right. Any more questions? Do you ever have the version? Um, Fury asks, do you ever have, do you ever have it happen where I, the version released is worse than my version? No, never, never. Gosh, never. At some times I've thought so, but then eventually realized I was wrong. Like mixers are mixers because of, you know, <laughs> what was I trying to say? Those beans are starting to hit. Mixers are mixers because, and they're, 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 there's only a few prominent mixers because they're really fucking good at what they do. And like, I trust their decision making more than I trust mine because... Again, it kind of works into the, being attached to the demo, right? Like, I have to let go of, like, how loud I liked my snare, you know? And uh, I remember thinking, like, there was too much sibilance on the second verse of New Rules when I heard the first mix that Josh sent me. And he's like, he showed me. He's like, I didn't do anything different. I'm like, oh, well, I'm a weirdo then. But I, I always, like, thought something was weird. Like, the highs were boosted. No one cares. No one cares. There are marginal things that just make no fucking difference. All right. So... Oh, Dawson asks, how many tracks have you pitched that haven't been cut? Are you fucking kidding me? When I say that I win because I'm a good loser, I mean I win because I'm a really good loser. Fucking, I think, uh, hold on. With Lizzo, for example, we must have written 30-ish, 30 songs maybe over the course of a year and a half. Um, and I think I have three on the record. Like, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. Wrote a ton of, there's a ton of Dua songs that just never see the light of day. Full finished, in finished demos, just didn't make the cut, didn't, didn't make the future nostalgia cut. And that's it. You just got to take the L. It's part of the deal, man. I don't give a fuck. Let's start something new. I, it took me years to be like that. <laughs> you got to get, you got to be a really good loser. Um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, fuck. And, you know, with, like, the Chainsmokers, we did so many fucking songs. Probably the same amount, if not more. With, with, with Drew, we, we, on our own, started so many, like, ideas together, and then just, they never went anywhere. It's just, a uh, like, that, um, you yeah, if, if anyone r remembers this, there was a week that I spent in Malibu with Lizzo. It was my idea, too. Like, the label paid for this nice house. I was like, just give us a week, you know, get Tehran out there, get Pop out there. Lizzo, like, can bring her friends. We just, like, we can we can celebrate all the work we've done and also, like, you can do, like, some Hail Mary sessions, you know? I thought we had two from that that were, like, sick. And I was like, cool, this trip's going to be worth it. The label's not going to be mad at me. Songs didn't make the cut. So that whole trip was, besides the fun of, you know, getting to work, like, nothing came of it. And then the last two weeks, we had, you know, these are, like, the Hail Mary sessions, like, the last ditch, you know, let's see if we could just beat something that's already on the record. 
And, uh, you know, it was like one and a half weeks of sessions with Lizzo and Pop. And we were just like, you know, we, we would work on some stuff that needs to get done, but we'd also just try new shit. And I thought, again, I thought there was two of them that I was like, this is, these are dope. Didn't happen. So, you know, it's just part of the deal. It's part of the deal. <clears throat> um, Goku Roku asks, do you think those songs were good still or was the label right? That's the thing is there's no, I think me, I personally am like, you know, a few of them. I'm like, yeah, this, this is a, you're making a mistake. But it's not even like the song's not like good. The song could be just good. But like when you're talking about, you know, Lizzo or Dua, it's like just good is like, mm -mm. like it's just got to be like unfucking deniable, you know, and, and, and they're, they're just not undeniable. It might be enjoyable. It might go off in the club, but like, I don't know. I mean, some of them, I think, you know, people are always, there's like, you know, historic Stories of the guy that passed on the Beatles and shit. Like, no one fucking knows. That's the other scary thing is, like, when 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 I had my first number one with Want to Want Me, Lindy Robbins, who was a co-writer on the song, said, you don't understand what a miracle it is to have a fucking number one. Like, how many things have to go right? And at the time, I didn't understand. This is 2015. I didn't understand what she meant. But she had been in the business for a minute at that point. And now I understand what she meant. Like, everyone has to be on board. Radio has to be willing to play it. Like... The label's got to be behind it. The, there's got to be, like, a budget for a video. There's so many fucking things that can, you know, maybe the artist goes through something controversial at the time, like, uh, you know, that can hurt the chances. Or, you know, maybe, like, for Want to Want Me, I think that song was around with Derulo for, uh, they spent, like, he was still working on the record after that, after he cut that song, and we finished that song for nine months. And it was like, if we, you know, Want to Want Me is a single, unless we beat it. So I'm just like, twiddling my thumbs for nine months going fuck 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 you know and he's in with everyone writing songs it's like it's, it's a fucking miracle <laughs> so and you know like for new rules i feel like the music video going viral had a huge part in the song's success in the states right i don't know this hypothetical i mean i'm just thinking like you, you gotta so many things have to go right so yeah i think some of those songs are, are good but like i don't know like I think maybe I don't invest too much emotion into thinking about things like that because it would just hurt me too much to think about how much shit is just wasting away on my hard drive. Like, there's got to be some, you know, I'm sure there is at least one or two sleepers in the thousand songs that are just sitting on my hard drive that maybe they'll come around again. Who knows? I don't know. The art, I was just talking to uh, my friend Emma today about the art of revisiting and how it's a skill of a songwriter, like going in to dissect your songs is like, or like being a producer and going back to an old idea. And, you know, maybe the hook was dope, but the verse sucked. Like having the fucking wherewithal, is that the word? Having the like ability to go in and like fix the hook then, you know, like it's the art of revisiting is tough for me, especially because I've conditioned myself to be so like armor plated and like, you know what? I took the L, who cares? Blah, blah, blah. Hey, uh, Little Mix's, didn't, Little Mix's label didn't think New Rules had a hook at the time. And I was like, huh, probably right. They're the, they're the experts. My manager pitched New Rules like a few months later to do his team. It's like, I had already written the song off. The fuck do I know, right? Sorry, sorry, cussing. I don't know anything. No one knows anything. Everyone's an idiot. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. All right. Uh, La Laventure asks, did you feel like you were going in the wrong direction at some point during the production pro process? Um, I'm sure there were some things that I decided not to do because I thought they were wrong. And in New Rules' case, maybe I was right. And then other songs, I was wrong. I don't know. Yeah, Thriller was a rewrite. That's true. Starlight. Wasn't it like Starlight or something? Uh, what would be your help to producer songwriters who work too slow and are stuck in feeling every project is super precious? Oh man, discipline, bro. <laughs> Compartmentalize. I don't know. Have I don't have better advice. Bounce a two track. Render the track. <laughs> I don't know. It applies to like hi hats and songs. Um, just take that advice from rendering files and apply it to the bigger picture, and that's I think is the best way, the healthiest way. Um, Le Leo X Forest asks, why and how do you approach adding layers to create one synth? Um, each, each, each layer serves its purpose. 
uh, let's see, there's still some layers on this. Like these are all doing the same thing. But like without this bottom layer, I don't get as much sustain. Right? So like I'm thinking about the fact that this is running one, don't pick up the phone, you know. with all this shit happening on top of it, right? It's the pre. The vocal is the priority. I want to hear that sustain more. I could compress it more maybe. Oh, why not just like add this more fuzzy, I think this is reactor with like the the reverb sync thing all the way on wet. And in monophonic. And all of a sudden, I have better sustain in the midst of all the shit. I can hear more of the notes sustain. So, like, the important thing here is the reason I have these three layers is, like, maybe one of them is the original attack. And then maybe this is... I don't even know. No. I don't know the reason on that layer. Maybe brightness, but like this one is for sustain. You know, they all serve a purpose. Like it's the same thing with, uh, for instance, you remember the snare that we went over, which is now just one stem. But in the earlier project, it was two layers because the bamboo snare, um, the original bamboo guy. That's pretty. Yeah, I think it was that one. Maybe at the time didn't have enough snap for me, so I added a sample on top of it. And now it's got the real snap, you know? So that's, you know, each layer of a synth or a drum serves its purpose. This is for the transient. This is for the body, you know? I wish the snare was a little brighter. What if I mix in some white noise on top of this snare sample? And then just, just mix it in so it doesn't feel like two things. The listener doesn't know it's two layers. They just hear a fucking snare. Stop cussing. Um, okay. A few more. A few more. Fabrizio Supra! Oh, now I have to read your question, I guess. You have a way to make the vocal... <laughs> oh, fucking damn it. You have a way to make the vocal melodies, or is it just like freestyle until you get something you like? Yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, everyone's in the room kind of sitting there vibing like, you know, what about this? What about that? Like, the new rules chorus was like, what if I took this part and put it here? And, you know, sometimes you can finagle something together by editing. But most of the time, it's, yeah, it's like, you know, sometimes we'll pass the mic around. Everybody do some ideas. Dare to suck, you know, don't worry about shit. Dare to suck is the best advice ever. Shelly Pike can shout out. Um, you know, dare to, dare to have a bad idea, basically. That's the point of it. Like, I dare you to fucking be vulnerable in front of me and just sing your heart out. Who cares? This is a safe space. <laughs> Dare to suck. It's the best advice. It's legendary advice by a legendary songwriter, Shelly Pikin. Shout out, Shelly Pikin. Holy shit, shout out, Shelly Pikin. I'm a bitch. I'm a lover. I'm a child. I'm a lover. Great song. Okay. Sizzly Paul asks, how do you deal with the anxiety of making it? Um, I don't know, man. I had, I had it, I think I had it pretty... Pretty, I can, I grew up in LA, first of all, and I had the luxury of being able to live at my mom's house on and off until I was like 29. Like, it was hard out there for a player. The struggle was real, even in the old days. But, you know, like at the time, I wasn't just sitting around doing nothing. It's like, you know, my, uh, man, my now manager, Dan Patel, was also living in his mom's house. But like, you know... And he, 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 was, he would always, like, keep the big picture in mind. You know, he's really good at that. He's like, look, we're investing in our studio. We're reinvesting all the money we spent. We have this luxury of being able to avoid paying rent for a few more years so that we can invest in the studio. And we got some monitors, and we got, you know, we built a PC for, like, 1800 bucks, and that was a huge deal. Huge deal. So, I don't really, I mean, like, when I say... You know, you still obviously got to make the good music and shit like that, but I always have a lot of admiration for people that come to LA, move here to do music and make it and, you know, or a lot of the time it's like they'll kind of get some attention wherever they are and then come to LA to get, you know, to full, to, to write with people and stuff. Like, I I don't know. Uh, I just remember not having, oh God, this is, I don't know if this is good advice. Like I was building websites to 
make money on the side because you, you know at one point we were recording what uh, you know it was five hundred dollars a song. You know, local bands would come in. It'd be terrible bands, terrible recordings. Like, and I was building websites, and I was making a lot of money building websites. Maybe I would have kept doing that or something, but I don't know. I don't ever remember having a plan B, which I don't think is the best advice. But like, I never was like, I'm gonna be a producer. Like, I was like, I know I love making music, and like all my little, you know, Aphex Twin inspired production came in handy when I was working with these Warp Tour bands because it was right around the time when Matt Squire did Panic at the Disco's record, and that was the first time I ever heard electronic you know and 303 was popping off and it was like wait a minute there's like this electronic aspect to warp tour it's not just rock songs and i was like i love electronic music this is a great little thing you know i can put my weird you know apex square pusher big beat inspired shit into rock songs like better than the fucking rock producers can because i'm versed in the in the idm shit i remember like being like really you know having a sense of like fuck i, I think i can do this but like in reality, it, it 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 you know the other half of it is just it just started getting busier and busier, and instead of local bands, it started being bands on labels and stuff. So like I don't know, I was just like, I was so fucking just doggedly pursuing, you know, I kept people kept telling me I had potential, and I was so like fuck fuck off. Like if I if I had potential, wouldn't I be successful? <laughs> you know, but I was always like building, always building, always building, just like I don't know. I didn't deal with the anxiety well. I fucking worked my ass off. I, I'll tell you how terribly I dealt with the anxiety. I'm 39, and I, I'm like a workaholic. Like, I just work. You know, God, this is, you know, my life is great, but, like, I'm not married yet. I, I, I don't even have a girlfriend at the moment. It's like, I'm, you know, my life became my work, and it's kind of where I am in my life now at this age. You know, yeah, like, I got a career and everything, but, like, with respect to the rest of life, I always feel very behind. Because I've all I did was this, like all I do is this. It's Friday night at nine thirty. I'm here, you know. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's more because I'm like antisocial fucking weirdo. But like, you know, I'm obsessed. I was obsessed. I'm still kind of obsessed with this shit. It's just like it's my life. So, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't think I handled it well. <laughs> so, anyways, um, will you hear the beats of your followers again? Ooh, call them my followers. I missed that stream, and I have something one minute long that you might like. I'm going to do a feedback stream. I'll do a feedback stream. Um, This is the therapy section of the stream. God, you know what? That happens a lot, huh? Embarrassing. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, okay. Go outside, Ian. I agree. Um... <laughs> Ian, does your mom think you should be married? Yes, of course. My parents are like, that's great and all, but what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> She's a Jewish mother. What do you think? Um, all right. Grass is always greener. Kevo, feel that. I don't forget that, by the way. I know. Oh, here's a here's a question that can get us out of therapy territory. Do you know a good plugin to give vocal clean low end when the vocals are too flat? Yes, Soothe. Use Soothe by Oak Sound. It's the best. How do you preserve the energy? Oh, this is a good question. All right, let's do a couple more questions. How do you preserve the energy of a record when you're 20 to 30 hours in? <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> Take a break. Take it like a two-day break. Oh, and then do that. Uh, I, th I think I did this in one, or I talked about this in one other stream, but I do this thing where like I'll, I'll plug in the SM7, close my eyes and put a track on the project and just record my notes in real time, like fresh listen. I'll be like, I have these files that are so funny. If you listen to them, they're just like, Turn that symbol down. Feels terrible. Redo synth here. And then I have a visual display of my notes on my fresh listen on a waveform in my project. It's like the most genius shit I've ever done. I feel like I probably saw someone doing that and then copied them and now I'm claiming credit. But, you know, I know it's not a new idea. But anyways, that's helped me a lot to... And then, and then, oh, sorry, sorry. Here's the end of the question. Here's the end of that answer. How do I keep the energy going after being so deep in a song? It's, and then I stick to my notes from that fresh listen and I don't try to get lost in like a hi-hat or something. I try to be disciplined about going through my notes that I made on a fresh listen. That's, I think, a good way to do it. Um, oh, hearing the part about you say a potential, but then, yeah. 
Yeah, I fucking feel that shit. Shit was so, so annoying. People always be like, you have so much potential. It's like, shut the fuck up. Uh, local dogs, can you take me to a strip club in LA? I haven't, I've been to a strip club once in my life. It's, it's, some people love it. I mean, it's like depressing to me. At least the one I went to in Vegas was depressing because it might have been seven in the morning. So I don't have a good database of what it is at a strip club. I also got like ushered into one random place and like in, in Vegas, it used to be really shady. They used to like, you'd be like all your boys drunk and some dude in like a fucking sketchy suburban be like, you guys want to go to a strip club? We're like, fuck yeah. And they would like take you to this place and there's all these like big dudes and they're like, it's 20 bucks to get in. We're like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like a 17 drink minimum or something. <laughs> oh, I don't know if it's still like that, but it was fucking, <laughs> all right. Goku Roku asks, do you deal with hearing loss? Also, how do you keep your ears healthy? Working at low volume. Funny enough, I'm, I work most of the time in headphones. I have a pair of barefoots, but I work at low volume. I already have like, sometimes I have like mild tinnitus and a little, uh, this thing, I believe it's called hyperacusis. Like I'm really sensitive to shrill sounds. So, which I've always wondered how that impacts my production. That's another question. All right. So I think that's a good place to wrap this wonderful time tonight. Is there... I hope it was informative. Yeah, it could have. It, it should have been. It was, it was nice. It was nice. I hope I don't get in trouble for anything. Is there any sort of legal ramifications of playing a dumb? I don't think so. I like wondering these things out loud. <laughs> All right. So, happy Friday. Um, Have a great night and fucking... Oh, come hang out on the, the Discord server. Wait, I'm going to post a link in the chat. Hold on a second. I don't even, I don't think Steve is still awake. <laughs> um, I'm not going to make that joke. Okay. How do I copy a fucking link? Dun, dun, dun. Invite people. Copy. Bada boom. All right. Here's a link to the Discord. Come hang out whenever. And we'll, we'll, we'll party. All right. Love you guys. Adios.